extra mile, extra mile, to go the extra mile. My brother and sister in Christ, it's about the late 60s, early 70s. His name is William. William lives in um, Goose Creek, Texas. And he'll tell you that his mom and dad were great parents. His mom, quintessential mom, do it all, does it all, twice on Sunday. Matter of fact, his dad is a project manager, loves what he does. He's a hands-on guy, man, the great couple. But he'll tell you, man, he struggled. In grammar school, well, it's uneventful. But in high school, William finds out he does two things well. He plays football and gets in trouble. He does them equally well. He's so good, quote, in football that he gets a scholarship to Pittsburgh State. When he gets to college, they find out that he's good in football, <laughs> but he's really good at getting in trouble. So much so they ask him to leave. He leaves and then decides to go to Oklahoma State. For some reason, out of the blue, William thinks that he's got a, a thing for acting. He goes to school, and William will tell you to this day, his biggest fault is he can't go the extra mile. You know, he is one class short to this day, not a semester, a class short of graduating, refuses to go back. Man, brother and sister in Christ, he gets out and starts his own band. It's called the Rubber Band. And when you figure out who he is, you're going to say, that fits. And as a result of such, man, you know how long that lasted. There's no money. He starts doing odd and end jobs, goes to California, works on the stage, does a little props, does a little camera work. Finally, somebody offers him a job. Would you be willing to do a stand-in or maybe die in a scene? His greatest claim to fame, William, at that time, was he's the last guy to die in gun smoke. Yes, brother and sister in Christ, and he'll be the first to tell you. Then all of a sudden, Bonanza picks him up. Then all of a sudden, brother and sister in Christ, he gets on another one called Thunder and Lightning. It kind of gets his break in the action. But what's amazing about him is, he'll tell you, he is so good at being in trouble, they always make him the bad guy. And when they ask him about it, he says, well, look, I don't have to act. I just got to be myself. He says, man, I'm great at being a bad guy. He's got blonde hair, blue eyes, plenty of teeth, brothers and sisters in Christ. I don't know how else to explain it. So, man, brother and sister in Christ, all of a sudden the door opens up. He's in the movie such like uh, he's in Point Break, but he plays a good guy. And this one about an issue of a beach and people robbing the bank who are surfers. But then all of a sudden the bad guy props up again. He's in Under Siege. He's in Lethal Weapon. Predator 2. He's also in another one called Fallen Angels. He's also on The Long Road. He gets in another show called The Firm, The Gingerbread Man. Man, my brother and sister in Christ, he's always got it down to a science. But you know the part that everybody recognizes him, which is obviously very few here today, is he's in the movie and he plays Buddy Holly. And he says the only reason he gets the movie is he has as many teeth as Buddy Holly does. You know what's amazing, brothers and sisters in Christ? You know William. You know him as Gary Busey. Okay, for the eight people who know who he is, God bless you for this, okay, my brother and sister in Christ. But you know what's amazing? If you talk to him today and you ask him, did you ever make the long mile? Did you ever go that extra mile? He'll say, I've only done it once in my life. He said, when I went to rehab, he said, it's been the best blessing I've ever could imagine. To this day, he's almost been two years clean. He said, man, it was the beginning of the end for everything for me. He said, I got to start anew. All because Gary Bell uh, goes for the extra mile. That is exactly what that gospel is all about. My brother and sister in Christ, I want you to think for a second. Mary Magdalene gets up in the morning, and she runs to a tomb. She'd rather be near a dead Savior than a live person. She has got the resolve that you can only imagine. That extra mile, think about what she's done. She's got to go through a set of guards that know her all too well. She's got to move a boulder that's going to be totally impossible for one person to move, not to mention it's been sealed by Pilate, which means she will break the law. She'll be subject to 40 lashes. Brother and sister Christ, she has no care. And because of the measure of her resolve, she makes sure she gets to the tomb. And because she does, she's the first to see the risen Christ. Brother and sister Christ, that's what it means to go to the extra mile. Now remember, if you are a first century Jew and you're living in these days, you need to make sure you understand something. Whenever a Jew hears the term or the verbiage, the first day of the week, as a Jew, you immediately go all the way back to Genesis. Genesis started on the first day of the week, Sunday. 
He resurrects on Sunday. My brothers and sisters in Christ, the wedding to Cana on Sunday, the miracle at the well on Sunday. This is why you and I celebrate on Sunday. Creation began on Sunday, and then it resurrected and began yet again. My brothers and sisters in Christ, it's about going the extra mile. Now look, go back through Scripture. All the great players, just take the people tied to the crucifixion. Nobody else. Take the people tied to the crucifixion. Mary Magdalene, Longinus, Peter, Simon of Cyrene, Arimathea, Joseph of Arimathea. Every one of those, we would not know their names in this book if they don't go the extra mile. Mary Magdalene, she has all seven demons. Pride, anger, gluttony, lust, avarice, sloth, and envy. She's telling you and I, 2,000 years later, you go the extra mile, and no matter how many demons plague you, that someday you'll finish this race if you turn towards him and go the extra mile, his face will shine upon you, no matter how grave your sin may be. My brother and sister in Christ, man, you're, you're Simon of Cyrene. You know what's amazing about this guy? And I don't think people understand. Here's a guy that's working. He's got two sons, Alexander and Rufus. Those are both scriptural. He comes in from the field. Remember now, back in the day as a first century Jew, the army could conscript you. In other words, they can make you part of the army, and you were there for 30 days. Walking down the street, they could pull you right out, and you're done. There's nothing you can do about it. Here's a guy that was coming into the city to worship the Passover meal. Remember, if you have blood on you, for seven days you're quarantined. You missed the whole festival. Now all of a sudden, he's carrying somebody else's cross. You're done for about 30 days, and oh, by the way, he's full of blood. And you know what Simon and Cyrene taught you and I? That great act of kindness. Not only does he get the blood on him, he gets the blood of the lamb on him. He truly was at the Passover meal, all because he gave up his time and went that extra mile, literally carrying the cross one mile. Say what you want about Longinus. That's the gentleman who allegedly speared our Savior. Here's a guy that dominated the centurions, the, the soldiers. If Pilate doesn't have this guy, he's got no control of the armpit of the world. So Pilate has seen it. Man, having Longinus there, man, his world was measurably easier. For Longinus to, after he's been stabbed, to turn and say, truly, this man was the son of God. Do you know what he's done? He's actually proclaimed to the same people that crucified him, we made a huge mistake. Not only did we make it, but I'm leaving. Moreover, Pilate, I don't care what you think, I'm out of here. Do you know eventually, eventually he will be beheaded by the same group of people that he helped defend. And you know what's amazing, brothers and sisters in Christ? Longinus taught you and I 2,000 years later that it's never too late to make your proclamation. It's never too late to say you're sorry. Judas is two words away from being St. Judas. I'm sorry. Think about Arimathea. Here's a guy that gives up his tomb. Brothers and sisters Christ, you don't have extra tombs. Only the rich have them. And if the fact, if you have one and you gave it up, you're probably going to be buried in some basin, some riverbed, some pasture, or some part of land. And but because you do, today, 2,000 years later, there are churches that are building tombs called Arimathea, just like you and I did. And man, say what you want about Peter. You want to talk about the man that went the extra mile. 33 years. Man, you're preaching that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. You don't think somewhere, somewhere in the next 33 years after the good Lord ascended, not one person in the peanut gallery, when he comes to speak about Christ, doesn't yell out, well, man, Peter, aren't you a piece of work? Here you are telling me how to live. You're supposed to be the man, the rock. Had your name changed, been given the keys. You're protos. But yet you denied him three times. Man, did Peter tell you what it means to be resilient? That all sins can be forgiven? Were you willing to turn back and say you're sorry? To go the extra mile? Man, the reward is greater than you and I can know. Well, now here you and I sit 2,000 years later. Brother and sister Christ, will you go the extra mile? My brother and sister Christ, think for a second. When you go, when it's time, that phone rings, and you're sitting out comfortably, and man, life is good, the show is on, the ball game, whatever it may be, could be dancing with stars. I say that because my mother's not here this morning. Man, brother, sitting that phone rings, and you know who it is. You're going to be on that phone. I don't care how you count this pie. You ain't getting off. You're on it. You also know what the conversation's going to be. You know you're going to end up in the exact same spot you started after the hour. 
You've made the complete circle. Will you or will you not get on the phone, Simon, so that they have some consolation, some ability to vent and to speak and to clear their thoughts? My brother and sister in Christ, will you go by and see that family member you refused to talk to or put a note in the mail just wishing them a happy Easter? Look, there's no strings attached. Will you at least say happy Easter? I mean, he, he has risen, has he not? My brother and sister in Christ, will you go by the nursing home where they have absolutely no one going to visit them because family's come and gone? Will you bring a gift and drop it off to someone that maybe that's just a good friend? Will you go the extra mile? My brother and sister in Christ, think for a second. When somebody asks you to pray, will you stand up and make the sign of the cross and offer a prayer, albeit the Blessed Mother, the whole Hail Mary, and then close with the sign of the cross? Will you go the extra mile to make sure that you don't offend them? My brother and sister in Christ, do you understand? There is nothing neutral in the world. Every second of every minute of every minute of every hour of every day has to be fought over. Every inch of every foot, every foot of every yard, and every yard of every mile must be fought over. C.S. Lewis is right. There are no neutral positions. Lucifer is in the hunt. He wants your soul. Brother Jesus Christ, what part do you not understand? He hates you. You've been made in the image of our Savior, Jesus Christ, and he is your name causes him to spit. He wants you in hell, and he will go after your soul to the extent that is necessary to bring you down. You and I have one job, and one job only. We do not have a profession. A profession is from the day we come in the world to the day we go home. That's when your degrees mean absolutely nothing. From this day forward, this day forward, the judgment will be immediate. And he will be there. There will be no negotiations, arbitration. There will be no nothing. The judgment will be final. So my brother and sister in Christ, we have one job to get to heaven, which means you and I can't stay neutral. You're either walking towards him or you're walking away from him. If you go to the same number of masses last year as you went this year, you're neutral. It's just a matter of time before you just inertia takes over. You go to the same amount of sacraments last year as you do this year. Brothers and sisters in Christ, you go by the church as many times last year as this year. You're backing up. You have to go to that one more mass. My brothers and sisters in Christ, if you got up in the morning and just said a prayer one morning, thanking God for letting you wake up with a roof over your head and clothes on your back and a family that loves you, you got a chance to go to work. Whether or not you like it or not, it's a chance to make ends meet. Will you make a prayer before and after each meal? Just before. Even if you forget the second one, that's three. Brothers and sisters Christ, if you say one prayer, saying thank you, Lord, just thank you for one more day, that's five prayers a day. Imagine that times 365. My brother and sister in Christ, you can't be neutral. You must be moving forward. And I'm going to ask you this, and I will leave it with you. There are two things I want you to remember. My brother and sister in Christ, the point of this is that you constantly need to be moving forward. you got to go that extra mile. That is what gets your name in the book of life. You and I have been given gifts. You can either bury the gift in which he will, it will cause reprehension upon him, or you can double it up and then I'll receive more gifts, which means you can no longer stay neutral. And then I'll leave you with this. My brother and sister Christ, there is very little traffic. There are no crowds on the extra mile. But the ability to travel the extra mile begins and ends right here between your ears. Go the extra mile. Amen. Amen. Now, brothers and sisters, I've been yelling for a good 10 minutes. This is Easter Sunday. Amen. Amen. There we go, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen.